You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Whether it's for food, fuel, drinks, or snacks, about half of the U.S. population shops at a convenience store every day. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. Welcome to Convenience Matters. My name is Jeff Leonard, and we're broadcasting live from the Nax Show today. And I'm Jamie Goff, also from Nax. So today we're going to talk about something uh, which may or may not be of interest to you. If you care about food and you eat, you'll want to listen to this segment. So today on Convenience Matters, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about food service. We're going to talk about where we were, where we are, where we're going. And for that, we have our guest, Mark Domenico. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll fix that in post. Uh, Mark Domenico with um, Data Central. He's the Director of Client Solutions for Data Central. So welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. So we've heard you speak here at the NAC show. We've heard you speak at the State of the Industry, NAC State of the Industry Summit. And you really focus on food service trends now, new, and next. So let's just start off with something really broad. What is the big trend now? Uh, that's, a, that's a loaded question. I mean, there's so many things to talk about um, from uh, uh, healthy eating to uh, ethnic food trends uh, pick a topic, right? So for um, we can start off with health and wellness. Um, uh, plant-based eating is a big deal right now. Um, uh, but also, uh, you know, as we, uh, we covered today, uh, yesterday in, the, in my education session, um, uh, something that we call Healthy 3.0, which is the, the latest iteration of uh, where we see health and wellness trends going. And that's all about functional foods, right? So what foods can do for me. Um, and so you'll hear people talk about, you know, protein is the, one of the big ones, right? So uh, a lot of foods uh, now being marketed um, with their protein content, um, uh, first and foremost, but also things like antioxidants, probiotics, um, uh, all of those things. Turmeric is one of the big ingredients that we highlight. Um, turmeric's been around for a long time. It's a, a, a great uh, seasoning, flavoring uh, spice. But uh, it's also uh, being uh, promoted for its anti-inflammatory benefits, right? So again, more about what food can do for me above and beyond, um, you know, what we typically expect food uh, to do, right? Which is just satiation. So, um, uh, you know, that's uh, that's good for for health and wellness. Again, plant-based eating is a big deal. Um, lots of different th- trends going on there in terms of, um, you know, beverages with uh, with dairy-free milks. Almond milk, coconut milk, soy milk, all that um, uh, stuff coming into play. Um, uh, but also, um, uh, you know, people looking to cut back on the amount of meat that they consume. Uh, so we have a statistic that we showed in the, in the presentation uh, where the number of people who uh, identify themselves strictly as meat eaters has declined uh, over the past four years by somewhere around um, uh, 15%. Uh, and certainly that number is uh, being, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken over by uh, a little bit by people who identify themselves as vegan and vegetarian, but they're still relatively small. What we're seeing more growth with in a larger se- uh, segment of the population is people who identify themselves as flexitarians. Um, and those are people who will eat meat, but not every day, right? So maybe once or twice a week, uh, they'll go uh, for some strictly vegan or vegetarian uh, dishes. So our, our point there is, is that vegan and vegetarian meals aren't just for vegans and vegetarians anymore. Now um, you'll see people uh, opting for those, uh, those meals um, uh, just as a way for them to kind of reduce the consumption of meat uh, for a variety of reasons, health-wise, environmentally, um, you know, whatever their concerns are, they'll be uh, cutting back one way or the other. So, Jamie, we saw on the NAC show floor uh, exactly some of those trends where you see that we're combi- it's not enough to quench a thirst. What else can the, what, what else can the item do? Right. Uh, it's not enough to, to feed a hunger. What else can the item do? And, and so, Mark, in, in some of the things that you're looking at, uh, we're talking about turmeric. We're not going to see a lot of that in convenience stores, or, or will we? Are these restaurant trends or are these food trends in all? all areas yeah and and, and that's a great point um and i I know you introduced me as uh, kind of the food service uh, trend but for us this is a broad food trend right so you will see turmeric uh showing up in in juices and other types of beverages um at the convenience store why not um we've uh, seen a couple of gourmet coffee shops launch uh i believe it was uh, caribou coffee launched the uh, golden latte which had turmeric in a latte form right so 
um, why wouldn't that be an item that uh, that the convenience stores could bring in and and do exactly that with uh, with beverages it's not just uh, you know quench my thirst but what else can it do for me so of course it should, could show up there absolutely one thing I'll add on to that also is um, tea. I've seen turmeric in tea, and I think pe there's some health benefits as far as like, uh, you know, when you're sick or you're just kind of feeling down or whatever, you can put you can put together like a turmeric kind of tea um, that will boost your immune immune system and just make you you know get you back on your Absolutely. feet. Absolutely, sure, yeah. yeah. And you can also see, particularly with the younger customers, when you communicate that that. It, it does something exactly like that. You see a lot of these pop-up smaller uh, tea stores or beverage stores that they do nothing but right. the 5 $6 beverage. Right. And uh, people will say, you know, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to go there. Uh, the idea of spending 7 $8 on a smoothie. Um, <laughs> I have trouble paying a buck for a milkshake, yeah, but right. <laughs> kids come by and it's like, can I have $8? Yeah. And that's that's the the, uh, the the one of the benefits that the convenience store uh, industry has is that they can provide these types of solutions um, and do it uh, a little bit more economically, so to speak. So, we talked about uh, we heard you when you talked at the State of the Industry Summit. One of the things you did, you went through the issues related to wellness and. 30 years, 20 years ago, we weren't exactly thinking the way we are now. There's been an evolution. In a, I guess it originally started with um, uh, taking the fat out of food or right. thinking mm -hmm. about weight loss. Yep. And, and so how does that, is any of that still, you know, the, the vapor trails from 30 years ago sure. still exist today? A or absolutely. is it different? Yeah, I think there's always going to be, uh, we call that healthy 1.0, right? That was all about what food shouldn't have, uh, fat, sugar, uh, calories. Um, and to, to some extent, that's still uh, around. Um, I think it seems to be uh, a kind of an undertone, right? Um, because we do still kind of pay attention to calories. We do, you know, uh, we have, we've cut out trans fat, and, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that we do try to uh, reduce. Um, but the dialogue now is more about those other uh, areas that we've talked about, right? So healthy 2.0, which is all about kind of the feel-good foods, right? Local, natural, organic. Um, more about where food is coming from and how it affects the environment. Um, and then again, 3.0 3 is all about functional foods. So those two areas have kind of taken over the dialogue. Healthy 1.0 is still around, right? I mean, it's still, and in fact, healthy 2.0, of course, is still very much around. Just because we're on to 3.0 doesn't mean those first two are, are um, out of the picture. So, um, and I, I would assume, Jamie, um, when we look at where we are right now with uh, some of the things with beverages, do you see uh, in, in any data that Nax collects or even just in your circle of friends, do you see like people are thinking differently and they're looking at, a, it, okay, convenience store, I don't necessarily need a bag of chips and a, and a, a fizzy drink there, but I will get something else. Well, um, so as a millennial, and I know people like to, tease and you know talk about millennials all the time the things that we are destroying um i think that some of the cravings are a little bit different than uh you know the generations before and even the new upcoming ones they've got things like kombucha out there that um you know someone like gen x might not have ever even considered eating and the millennials and the gen z kids coming up are really interested in like kind of really new and um things they've never tried before things they might not have seen elsewhere. They see it in a convenience store and they're like, well, wow, that's really neat. You know, I'd like to expand my flavor profile or just, you know, my, um, in general things that I've experienced. They're really into the experience and enjoyment of, you know, new flavors and new, um, new beverages. So I think C stores are a really great um, platform for those, for millennials and, you know, the younger kids coming in. Absolutely. <clears throat> I couldn't agree with you more. Um, we definitely do see, uh, more adventurousness uh, on the part of younger consumers. Um, uh, but that's not to say that older consumers aren't uh, adopting some of these flavors as well. Uh, it just seems to be driven a little bit more so by, uh, to your point, the millennials and the and Generation Z. Absolutely. And, and the younger consumers are more likely to try new things. They're more likely to, to say, uh, when you get to be my age, you remember that ethnic food is used to be pizza and Chinese, mm -hmm. and now it's a little bit more than that. It's Vietnamese, it's uh, uh, Thai, it's all kinds of different uh, formats. And, and one of the phrases, Mark, that you use that I, I just love is safe experimentation. Yes. Now, 
is that related to the retailer or the consumer or both? And, and how does that play out in a convenience setting? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of one of uh, been one of our mantras um, uh, uh, over the past couple of years um, that we tell a lot of our customers. Um, uh, you know how to uh, launch new items into the marketplace. Um, you want to um, you, you want to experiment some, but if you go too far out there, uh, you lose the audience, right? So um, uh, so it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of both, right? You want to play to the consumers, but you also want to make sure that you're going to give the the retailer something to sell, right? That uh, that's going to work. Um, so a couple of examples, right? So um, uh, you remember maybe four or five years ago, um, sriracha was still relatively new. Um, and there were a number of people who would put that on the menu, but they would call it Thai chili sauce. Um, so it gives it an explanation, right? So I get it. Oh, chili sauce, Thai food, f- fine. Um, so I know it's going to be spicy, and if I like that, great, I'm good. Um, they didn't menu it as sriracha because nobody knew what sriracha was. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, you, you want to be safe. You want to give people something what, uh, you, know, you know, that they're going to understand. Uh, but it was still, in the same time, it was a relatively new food and flavor trend. So you could experiment that way. Um, we talked about in our presentation the banh mi, right? So banh mi sandwiches are exploding on menus. Um, and uh, we, we have a service called Scores where we actually um, uh, send uh, new items that we see the big chains launching off in a survey to consumers. And we ask them, is this something you would be interested in buying? Um, and whenever we saw, this, this is a, a couple years ago, whenever we saw people menuing something as a bond me didn't get really good scores right people don't know what a bond me is uh, until one of the chains launched an item that they called the saigon chicken sandwich so um you know it's a vietnamese chicken sandwich people understand that right they understand all right saigon vietnam got it asian food i love uh chicken sandwich what's what's not to like um, that item scored really well on our survey uh, in the 80th percentile of uh, purchase intent, which is a strong score. Um, it had Bon Me in the description, but the name itself was enough to attract the consumer. So that's a great idea or a great example of uh, safe experimentation, right? You want to try something new, you have to make it relatable, you have to make it understandable to the consumers. Oh, I was just going to um so I would say that um, in just kind of summary of that, it's almost like you're taking something that you know people are going to like and just kind of almost, I don't want to say normalizing, but maybe like putting it in terms that is more, is easier digestible for them, like for them to, you know, see and understand. Absolutely. There's part of that, right? You want to explain the item um, so that they know what they're getting. But you can also use some more cutting edge ingredients um, in a familiar format, right? So you might see um, uh, gojujang is one of the newer flavors that we're seeing, right? It's a, um, a Korean kind of spicy um, paste uh, that can be used in any number of ways. Um, uh, you might not want to put that on, uh, you know, a very traditional Korean dish. Maybe bibimbap might be a little too much for uh, consumers to, to, to go for. But um, if you have stir fry, right, or maybe you put gojujang on a burger um, or in some type of bowl application where, you know, again, consumers know what they're getting, uh, but that one ingredient, um, you know, gives it that uniqueness, um, but it's not too much for the consumer to digest, so to speak. No, I, I love Pardon the pun. The pun. <laughs> yes. and, and Jamie, to amplify your point, one of the things I once read about innovation is if, if you have something really unique compare it to something that exists right and if you have something that's really not that unique make it sound something amazing and like take it out there sure. so it really is about taking that digestible bite and bringing it down to something everybody knows what chicken sandwiches right and everybody knows what vietnamese food is so you kind of mash it together and then you got something going right so when you look at trends and when you look at new things going on do you also kind of measure that against who's doing it well and, and look at, you know, that guy hits high on the scorecard or she hits high on the scorecard. Uh, we, we do, right? And I, I, I won't name names, but there are, are certain organizations uh, that do a fantastic job of, uh, of taking something um, uh, new and unique and, and either through some type of combination um, or, uh, you know, introducing a new flavor in a familiar format 
um, uh, kind of strike the two keys that we look for, right? And one is purchase intent, as we've talked about. You want to have something that's going to score very well with consumers. You can have something that's as unique as anything, but if nobody wants to buy it, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, so you want to have good purchase intent score and you want to have a good uniqueness score, right? Um, you want to have con uh, uh, something that consumers feel that they can't get anywhere. Um, because, uh, you know, we look at our scores database and uh, every time one of the, the QSR chains launches a bacon double cheeseburger, it always scores very well. Um, we're in America. That's what we love. Um, so the bacon double cheeseburger will always score well. The trouble is, is that it's not unique at all, right? There's no uniqueness to it. Um, and so when I think about a bacon double cheeseburger, there's a lot of different places I can go to get one. Right, and I'm not uh, necessarily driven to a particular location, but if it's an item that is, uh, you know, desirable and different, then I know there's only one place I can get it, and so that's going to drive me to visit a place. So that's what we look for when we uh, when we get our our uh, uh, our, our data in, um, and uh, and there's a number of chains that do it very well. Right, I, I, maybe the the one good example we can talk about um, is um, uh, the Doritos tacos from Taco Bell, right? I'm a fan. One of the most successful product launches in, in you know, commercial restaurant uh, history. And uh, and look at what they did. They, they It was a mashup. They combined their traditional taco with uh, with Doritos, and, and uh, it was such a huge win for them. Um, uh, purchase intent was there, and uniqueness was, you know, it's not something you can get anywhere. So, um, so that was the huge win. That's the kind of stuff that we look for. So thinking about... Um looking at safe experimentation is is that also a way to do limited time offers where it's like if you're a store and it's like we're going to try this we'll call a limited time offer and that might drive traffic but it also might give you a chance to say okay that didn't work because it was a limited time offer yeah absolutely that's uh, that's one of the key areas i think for limited time offers typically we think of uh, ltos uh, as seasonal items right all the pumpkin spice stuff that's coming out now is a great example of that um, uh, but you can, you know, twist it and make a little bit of a shift. Um, so instead of the pumpkin spice latte, maybe you add some turmeric into that, right? Um, and, uh, and give it a little bit extra oomph, uh, to give it that uniqueness. Absolutely safe experimentation definitely plays into, to LTOs. So your presentation was about now, new, next, uh, is there anything that you're just kind of perc percolating that you see that might be out there? Maybe not this year, but maybe next year, maybe 2020? Well, um, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, um, uh, one of the things that we've called out um, in our presentations is the, the rise of Middle Eastern cuisines, right? And so we're seeing um, a number of items uh, from the very familiar falafel, right? Well, maybe it's not as familiar, I guess, but um, uh, falafel's been around a long time, but we're seeing a pretty large increase on menus um, uh, for that type of item, uh, along with things like shawarma, um, uh, labna, which is a, a yogurt-based kind of cream cheese that um, you can use as a dip. A uh, lot of different things going on with uh, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean cuisines um, uh, that uh, I think we're going to see more of. Um, and again, more mashups, right? So you might start to see uh, pizzas or tacos that feature some of those familiar flavors uh, from those particular cuisines. So also on that same trend of, you know, things out next, um, like how, so on the SOI stage, the state of the industry last year, you had a bit in your slides about this chicken named Ian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, so basically the whole premise was that this company was using Ian as a clone to clone the meat. So um, do you see that as something that's viable for the future? Is it here already or, you know, uh, what are we looking at? Yes. Yeah, so viable for the future. Absolutely. Um, here already, I think in very limited form. Um, but absolutely, it's, uh, it's uh, commonly called clean meat. Um, I think we use the term cellular agriculture um, or lab-grown meat. There's a lot of different ways you can call it. But essentially, um, well, what companies are doing is uh, taking stem cells from animals um, and uh, uh, developing muscle tissue in a lab, right? Um, so no animals were harmed in the making of that meat, right? <laughs> um, and the video that you're referring to is, um, you know, the, the, uh, the company is, is Just. Um, if you remember, they came out with Just Mayo. I believe they're exhibiting here. Um, and they, uh, uh, they developed this uh, um, uh, lab-grown chicken 
um, and they show uh, their chef cooking up chicken nuggets uh, with this uh, with this meat. Um, and then there's Ian, the chicken, running around in the yard, and that's the chicken that they drew the stem cells from. So uh, Ian was alive and well as they were eating the meat that was produced uh, from his stem cells. So um, the promise of this uh, this product is uh, uh, is enormous, right? Um, uh, the environmental impact of uh, livestock is uh, is substantial. Um, uh, you know, there's lots of food safety issues associated with meat. If it's not handled properly or prepared properly, then uh, there are some uh, some challenges there. Uh, lab-grown meat can answer those, right? Um, and uh, you know, uh, uh, as we look at a, a planet that is uh, rapidly, uh, you know, well over seven billion in population, we're going to need to to come up with solutions that. Um, uh, that we can hopefully use to satisfy our cravings for uh, for meat and yet still uh, maintain a healthy environment. Is it something that you've tried or that you would try? What we do you think? We have tried. <laughs> yes, we have tried. Um, it's it's uh, it's good, right? Does it taste like chicken? Um, I, I, we didn't have the chicken one. I think we had the uh, uh, the beef one at our conference a couple years ago. So um, uh, it's 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 coming along. Well, I think the one thing that you can say it will be part of the future is, is the, the other part of Ian the Chicken. It's the story. It's a story of food and how do you sell food and how do you make people feel really good about food. So, Mark, thank you for joining us today. Uh, data is essential. And Data Central does that. So can you give us a shout out to where they can find out more about it? Sure. Just go to our website, www.datacentral.com. And it's D-A-T-A-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L.com. It's a mouthful, but uh, go there and we're we're happy to uh, to help out. Play it again. You'll get it all. Thank you, Mark. Great. And thank you for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.